Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. As a recording of this Monday, February 6, 2023, I am standing on this cobblestone street, I guess you could call it cobblestone, brick street here in Tacoma, Washington. Behind me, this homestead, a dog is barking. Down the way, a scenic view of the water off in the distance and a historic church building. Starting off on this road, I'm gonna do a little tour around Tacoma today. See what I can find. Starting off with this neighborhood. It has quite the vibe. Not necessarily because the dog was barking, but just because of the overcastness, the raininess, and the cool, crisp, very crisp weather here in Tacoma. And a historic home sits up here on the left. I'm inviting you to join me. I probably don't even need these. Shall you? Bean Crosby was born in a house right up here. I think. I think so. Now from the information that I had found online, there was a placard in front of his home where he was born and lived for, I believe, three years before moving to Spokane. Or is it Spokane? But I am not seeing a placard in front of any of these homes. The address is 1112. This is 1122. You can see it faintly there. So I'm just looking for 1112 North J Street. And I believe this is it right here. That's 1116. So if it jumps four to 1112, then this would be it. Yeah, this is 1112. Oh, there it is right there. There's the plaque. Take a look at this. Birthplace of Harry Lillis, nicknamed Bing Crosby, May 2nd, 1904. Placed here by the Sons of the American Revolution. This placard etched in the side of the stairwell. And after looking up a little bit more information about it, there's a discrepancy with this because it also states other places that he was born in 1903. So either those facts are incorrect or this marker is incorrect by one year. When I first passed by this, I couldn't, I didn't see it. So I'm, I guess I was looking down here, which it's not. Family built home, structurally sound and sturdy. One of the original I guess the terminology would be crooner. Is that the, the type of vocal style that he would have? Inspired many, many people like Frank Sinatra, Elvis, things like, you know, places, people like that. Most likely listened to Bing Crosby and gained a little bit of inspiration for their style as well. well this is where he was born, right across from this very impressive church building. I'm going to hit a lot of spots in the general area. I think I'm going to stay around Tacoma today. Feels really good out here. Feels nice. Probably like 40 degrees and brisk. It's a good looking house. Driving down these cobblestones. It's a little bumpy. Now back on. It looks like they paved over some of it. So they paved over some of the original cobblestone brick. You can see it there. Down the hill just a bit is Old Town Tacoma. This is the corner of North Carr Street. You see the C-A-R Street, C-A-R-R Street. You can see the sign is kind of blowing in the wind and the flags there, which are very, very prominently waving in the breeze because of the wind chill. You know, it's it's 40 to, in the mid 40s, but it feels a lot colder than that standing here because of the, the breeze is really heavily coming off of the lake. 
But I like this old mural that is here. I have my hand cupped over the mic because I'm not even sure how the audio is going to be in this with the wind. But there's a mural of an old train here. A couple of gentlemen on the front of the, the train. This mural was placed here back in 1998. But it looks to be a lot older than that, possibly retouched up in 98. Because right down here is the artist's signature, Bob Henry, 1998. This mural depicted life in the 1890s, made possible the community and gifts. City of Tacoma, it was dedicated in 99, so I guess, yeah, it was painted in 98. Dedicated a year later. Has that old timey look. Even got some banners through here as well. Some of the old timey buildings are still down this really pretty busy thoroughfare now. Back in the day, it probably was not this busy. Well, it definitely wasn't. Progress. On the side of this building is an old US mail slot. Take a look at that. That's a relic of the past. A few sculptures up here. Through Old Town. This one appears to be a gentleman holding a fish and a love interest embracing in a loving embrace here while he holds the fish looking lovingly into her eyes. But she is not paying attention to him. She is more enamored with the fish. He's got a bag full of stuff down here. Okay, this is Rabarski Pripo Vijas. A Fish Story by Larry Anderson. One of those would be the artist. Ooh, that wind is really blowing through here. So he's holding the fish here. It's very interesting. I don't really know what the backstory on this is, but they have the light there. I'm sure at night it's all illuminated so everyone can see the glorious fish that he's holding. Over now into the theater district. Do not block this driveway. Also looks to be kind of a art district as well. In fact, kind of see a lot of paintings here on these like empty buildings that are through there. But I believe on this corner is kind of a historic marker as well. Let's see if I can walk over there and find it. Where the very first time people were told to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. The Pledge of Allegiance or National Anthem was here in Tacoma. And I believe there's a marker over here. Also a pretty neat clock up there too that is not telling the correct time. I don't think that clock at the top of the tower has worked for quite, quite a while. It's all rusted out, but definitely is a sight to behold up there. The clock tower. Downtown Tacoma. Down at the end of the street, Tacoma also has a Pantages Theater. And also over here is an antique shop called Sanford and Son. This is definitely a cool little area. Classic car alert, this Thunderbird, this very beautiful blue Thunderbird. Now if this is the Bostwick building, then that placard would have been right here. Someone has either removed it or stolen it to the Bostwick building back in October of 1893 originated the custom of standing during the rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. It used to state it so right here, but someone has taken that piece of history right here. What I am assuming is the Bostwick building. According to a couple different articles I was reading online, that's where it used to be. Dang. It's gone. 
this rock pylon here has a bunch of hands kind of all reaching up to the top of it with a teetering rock over on the side as well. And there is also a Rialto, just like South Pasadena has a Rialto. Look at that building. Man, this is an awesome area. But there's the Rialto Theater. South Pasadena has a Rialto as well. That is a really cool looking old theater right there. Look at that. I love the old neon that's working. Beautiful. And the awnings there. Great, that's great. Club Silverstone used to have lounge and dancing area. And this place looks pretty awesome. This place appears to be open at certain times. I don't know if it's open today. The sign's not on. Savoy Special, where they have a lot of retro stuff in here, including this guitar. But take a look at this. Here is the genuine Budman t-shirt. There's even a classic Mickey up there in the corner too on that t-shirt. And that is a sweet mustache on that mannequin. Head. Nice, classic truck alert, that old Ford up there. I pulled down this alley, so I wanted to go to look at some of these vintage murals that are kind of tucked away here in the theater district. This was a one-way street, so I had to kind of go down one way around, not this road, but the other road, loop around and then park up here to kind of get this angle. But take a look at this beautiful old mural. This cigar package here, Turkish cigarettes. Omar, I believe it is. O-M-A-R is the name of the cigarette company up there but this is nice untagged untarnished with the exception of like you know weather worn and then over here is a new york and washington outfitting company mural one dollar will dress you for one week one dollar will dress you for a week and it has the guy on the end there with the sweet mustache and the top hat That is awesome. And I thought maybe there was a Coca-Cola mural up there, but it says something company in apparel. And then the Pythion Temple right there. And there's even a couple other murals that have been painted over that are tough to see. And then down here, there is an opti optician, exclusive optician. This is the kind of stuff I'm always on the lookout for and always trying to find, you know, untouched, for many years on the side of brick wall that they paint for advertisements from back in the day. So good. I just want to focus on it just for another another few seconds here. Bask in the glory of this nostalgia. Really the type of thing you see in really small forgotten towns, not really in bigger areas like the Seattle Tacoma area. So this was a, a nice little treat to see this untouched. Ended up driving about 20 or 30 minutes away from Tacoma to an area called Sumner, where there is a drive-through church building. I do not know if I've ever seen a drive-through. I've seen small churches, self-proclaimed smallest churches in the US, but not one that you can drive directly through the middle of. This is a real thing. What the heck? Right? Pretty awesome though. It's got the steeple up top. It's got the church bell. They can ring, ring the church bell. Drive as you are. You'll be loved. That's what the sign says out front. Take a look at this, a drive through church. That is something. I could safely say I've never seen anything like this before. Should probably wipe my lens off. I got rain on my camera. I'm gonna drive through it. I'm gonna go through and see what it's all about. Just like you would have at a fast food restaurant where they have the distance of how tall up your vehicle can be 
they have that here as well clearance eight foot eight inches my rental car should be able to squeeze through here barely And I'm the only one in the drive through line. I thought maybe the, the interesting novelty of this would be drawing quite a group of people. But it's just me. If you don't want to drive through, you can sit over here at this table. through got the stained glass windows has the little church pews here I this rental car turns off every time you kind of stall out I could also walk through it here's the pulpit I feel like it makes sense to drive over there at other stained glass That's different. That is definitely different. I did it, something I never knew I needed to do. I don't know if I'd classify it as a bucket list, but I did something I didn't ever expect I would do until today, drive through a church building. Very interesting. I kind of like it, it's different. And it draws attention to the larger congregation and the real church, well, I don't want to call it a real church, but the building over here that houses the larger congregation probably every Sunday. It's kind of a little novelty thing, but might get some people interested in the subject matter and in the religion and showing up here. It might even get a few people going to their congregation because they drove through the, this little building first and then decided, hey, we should come back on one day and see what the church is all about. It's different. I like it. And you can kind of see how it's set up here. I drove through. Now I'm walking back through. So I guess if you wanted to, you could come up here and even sit, get out of the car. There's a residential neighborhood over there in the distance. You got the cross up top there. Okay, here's the, here's the pulpit. even has some hours, but I believe you probably drive through this at any time unless they put a little chain up or something. And even have the Bible here, King James version of the Bible. Yeah. Might be the only one that there is. There's another one. I've never certainly never heard of of one before. All right, it's cold. Get back in my rental and carrying on, but I had to drive on the outskirts of Tacoma, probably 10 miles on the outskirts, 10, 15 miles outside Tacoma to see this. I'm glad I did. Pretty neat. And a little more information. This was built in 2020. I can do all things through Christ who strength as we Philippians 4.13. Also, I just noticed in this little retention pond outside the drive through building are a bunch of ducks there in the water. A lot of ducks. Some in the water and then some over there on the shoreline. Hello, ducks. Continued on down the way over to an area. I'm not allowed to park here, but I can drive past it. No parking, local residents only. Probably about 20 minutes from the last place I was, was at. But take a look at this cylinder ball here in the front yard of this. This used to be from the World's Fair 
In fact, I saw a photo of it yesterday when I went up into the Space Needle, and now it sits in front of this kind of Queen Anne looking cottage here, right along the water. And I actually got a photo yesterday when I went up to the Space Needle. They had a photo of this. I believe it was an elevator, perhaps? Let me look at the, the photo again. But now it is not downtown Seattle. It's over in an area called Redondo in front of this home. Very interesting. Just drove up and did a U-turn, turned it around. Sound View Drive South, right here along the water. And I snapped this yesterday, some of the information and attractions, talking about the World's Fair, located at the Space Needle now, which is like, gosh, a half hour, 30 miles or so from here. So it's moved all the way over here. One of the most popular fair attractions was called the Bubbleator. You can see it right there. An elevator, almost like the Wonkavator, but it's the Bubbleator. Now it's just sitting in someone's yard. Pretty neat. I don't know how they got access to that, how they ended up owning it, but a little hit, little World's Fair Seattle history many decades ago. This photo looks like it would have been taken from the other side. The doors would have been the other side. This is kind of around the back end of it. You can see the doors there that opened up and let everyone inside of the bubble later. That is a rather large coffee mug. The world's famous Bob's Java Jive. And the front sign out front says, yo. That's gonna do it for today. A little Tacoma, roaming around Tacoma and some other areas on the outskirts of Tacoma. Found some interesting stuff. I just felt like getting in my rental car and driving around, see what I could find. Look some stuff up. And most of it was still there. In fact, all of it was still there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is... That's a big coffee mug. Coffee cup. Coffee pot. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. Ooh, there's a monkey and a giraffe and an eyeball.